And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? I believe that today we'll be. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? We saw it out there. And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? What can stand again? What can stand again? Oh, oh, oh. help me say and hear. And if I got it for you, you gotta say it like you mean it.
I don't feel the Lord in this place on this morning. He's in the room. He's in the room. Turn to your neighbor and say, he's in the room. Hallelujah. We're going to be reading from Psalms, the first Psalms. Blessed is the man that walketh in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law do he meditate day and night. And he is like a tree planted by the water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. And his leaf also shall not wither, and whosoever he doeth shall prosper. Amen. As the Lord add a blessing to the reading of the word, as we pray our minds to pray for the sick and the compliment and our bishop and the first family. Amen. Good morning, church. Hey Amen. Uh, if you would just hold the hand of the person next to you. I believe God is getting ready to do some miracles in this place today. Let's just get on one accord right now. Every heart and our minds clear as we go before the throne of grace. Heavenly Father, we come before you right now. And God, we know that you're already here. But God, we want to come together as a congregation today first to say thank you. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for starting us on our way. Thank you for waking us up this morning. God, we don't take that for granted. And God, we know we're here today because you put the desire in us to come to church today. And God, we're asking that you would move in the midst of your people. On this 25th anniversary, this special occasion. But God, we honor this man of God that's due to this man of God. And God, we pray that we all get on one accord, that we want to honor and remember our man of God. We thank you for the gift that you've given to us today. God, we pray right now that in the midst of this, that you'll cause favor. Come by, somebody say favor and increase to come into our lives. How many of you know when you honor the man of God, God's going to be bring a blessing to you? Oh, and Lord, we ask you today to move upon the speaker today. Give us ears to hear what you would say to this church during this time, this hour, and this season. Bless our choir as they bring forth the anointed songs from heaven and God we bless you today in Jesus name amen amen praise God you may be seated we're preparing right now for our announcements and for our benevolent offering announcements for the week. Today is the day we've been anticipating all year. It's time to celebrate our man of God, Bishop Jeffrey D. Thomas Sr., as he reached a great milestone of 25 years of pastoral leadership at the Mount Rose Church. Each member needs an anniversary envelope and put your love into action. Every adult member has been asked to sow a seed of $100 and every youth $10. Let's be found being a blessing to our pastor today. Family Bible Institute will be on Tuesday at 7 p.m. Invite someone to come with you to FBI. Youth choir rehearsal will be on Thursday at 7 p.m. There will be one more order place for the red spiritually connected shirts 
The last day to place your order will be next Sunday, May 28th. The shirts are $20 each. See Sister Nikhil Watson or Sister Leslie Allen to place your order. The Iva Dean Scholarship Committee is now accepting applications of all high school seniors and college graduates. Applications can be obtained from and submitted to the congratul I'm sorry, to the church office. Applications will be accepted through May 28, 2017. Congratulations, graduates. All graduates, please be advised. Please advise the church office of your graduation information, your name and school, to be honored on graduation, graduation recognition Sunday. As you can see, our construction is well underway. Our foundation has been laid and the frame is going up rapidly. You don't want to miss out on being part of this exciting move in the life of our church. Join in the Gideon's Army and commit to $365 this year. Every member should be a part of this construction of our new worship center. Thought of the week from Bishop Thomas. Sometimes you have to part to make peace. <laughs> These have been your announcements. Please govern yourselves accordingly. If we have any visitors visiting with us for the first time, please stand. On behalf of Bishop Thomas and the Mount Rose Church, we're blessed and honored to have you in the service today as we congratulate and honor our man of God. We hope something is said and done that will help you come back and worship with us again. Mount Rose, please greet those guests in your area and everyone have a blessed week.
yes, yes. If you're not ashamed, look at two people and say the blood still works. at somebody and ask them, has it been good to you? Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together and worship Christ, our King. The Lord of hosts, strong and mighty, mighty in battle. He is the King of glory. Amen. And as we celebrate today, he is the one that allows us to lift up our heads. How many know he's a lifter of our heads? Amen. He will keep us in perfect peace. Those whose mind is stayed on thee. Y'all can be seated. He will keep us in perfect peace. Those whose mind is stayed on him. Amen. Amen. We celebrate today the Lord's Day. We celebrate Christ our King. We celebrate Jesus our Savior. And his name shall be called Emmanuel, meaning God is with us. Amen. For he will be the Savior of his people. Amen. We are anticipating a great time in the Lord today. I'm happy to to have in my presence, my president and my founder of our college of Word of, Bi Word of Life Bible College, a Bible school in Marshall, Texas. Would you help me welcome Dr. Gabriel Taylor? Would you stand, Dr. Taylor? Yeah, he's not only the president of the institute, he got a praise. Yeah. He'll go to shouting class on you, amen. Just, just knock all the Bibles and notes over. Amen. And he is here today to bring a great uh, presentation and award to, to someone special today. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So I'm happy to have him in our presence today. To all of God's people, uh, I think Pastor Glenn has gotten caught in traffic. Uh, am I right? And he hadn't. Amen. Choir, come on, sing one more song. And if Pastor Glenn ain't here, we're still going to be friends, but I'm going to be mad as hell. Amen. Y'all come on, sing another song. Come on, put those blessed hands together. Amen. Pardon the interruption. Amen. But we have a special guest in the house. Amen. And we want to have him come up since he is here with Pastor Glenn. And we're waiting on Pastor Glenn. We're going to get him the same. It is national recording artist Myron Butler. Come on and put your hands together for him as he comes in his own way. Amen. Bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Is there anybody that's glad to be in the house of the Lord today? 
Oh, no, no, don't fool me. I said, are you glad to be in the house of the Lord on today? This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what you're facing. I don't care what you left at home. God is still good. Do I have any witnesses? God is still good in the midst of your pain, in the midst of whatever you're facing. To Bishop, I thank you for this opportunity to stand and share with the church. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you've got power. And it has nothing to do with the amount of money in your bank account. It has nothing to do with how many degrees you have on the wall. It has nothing to do with your pedigree. What it has to do, the Bible says, death and life are in the power of the... I have some Bible readers in the house today. You've got the authority to open up your mouth and speak a thing. And if it is in alignment, if it is in agreement with the will of the Lord, then look at your name and say, neighbor. And you got to say this real strong. Say, it shall come to pass. Rest your hands on yourself. Just lay your hands on yourself just like this. I need the whole church to help me sing this today with the choir. We can sing. Sing, I shall have say. What I decree, what I decree, yes, I believe, it belongs to me, it belongs to me. Okay, everybody, I shall have, say, I shall have, what I decree, what I decree, yes, I
there's some of us in this room that have had some petitions before the Lord. It's not everybody. I know that. But I believe that there are a few of us, Pastor. I believe that there are a few of us in this room that have had some petitions before the Lord. I don't profess to know what they are. That's not my responsibility. But one thing I do want to affirm in this room is that God is well able to do exceedingly abundantly with everything that you ask or think. Listen, 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 listen. But what God, what heaven wants, they, heaven wants you to agree with what heaven has said about you. So, it doesn't look like you're healed. It doesn't look like you're delivered. But God says, open up your mind and speak those things that are not as though they were. Somebody just say this.
our children are coming. Our children are coming at this time. Amen. The children are coming at this time. While you're standing, let's put our hands together. Thank God for Myron Butler. Amen. Myron is the son in whom I'm well pleased. Amen. He's not simply my son-in-law, he is my son. In every sense of the word, amen. And then my my firstborn is here. Amen. And three of my four grandchildren. Thank God for their presence. Thank God today for the marvelous ministry of Bishop Jeff Thomas. For a quarter of a century, he has led this body of believers and has done an outstanding job. Amen. And for you people who came late, it hasn't always been like this. Amen. You see him now, but you don't know the struggle he's been through to get to where he is right now. Amen. And uh, that ought to be applauded and appreciated. God bless you, Bishop. It has not been easy. Amen. But he has remained faithful to the Lord and to you as a body of believers. Amen. There is a word I want to try and lift up that's found in the book of Joshua. I want to begin reading in chapter 5 at verse 13 and read through chapter 6, verse 5. Joshua chapter 5, beginning at verse 13. And it came to pass... When Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with a drawn sword in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said, Unto him art thou for us or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay. But as captain of the host of the Lord, am I now come? And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot. For the place whereon thy standest is holy. And Joshua did so. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho. And the king thereof and the mighty men of valor and ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horn. And the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times. And the priests shall blow with the trumpet. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout. And the wall of the city shall fall down flat. And the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. I, I want to talk 
today about walls will fall. All right, all right, all right. God bless you. Israel has finally entered the promised land. It has taken them 40 years to get there. But they are finally in the land of promise. But now, there stands Jericho. They have come through the Red Sea. They have crossed Jordan. But now, there stands Jericho. Jericho is standing in the way of them possessing what God has promised. And brothers and sisters, there are times in life when in order to get what God has for you, Jericho has to fall. So the question begs to be raised today. What is the Jericho in your life? Jericho can be a person or people. Jericho can be a problem, a possession, or even a pleasure. It is whatever stands between you and what God has for you. Israel had a problem. And the problem is that Jericho is a closed city. The city is on lockdown. Bible says it is straightly shut up. Another translation says it is tightly shut up. No one's going in. No one's coming out. And Jericho is surrounded by two massive stone walls. The outer wall is six feet thick and 20 feet high. The inner wall is 12 feet thick and 30 feet City's on lockdown. Nobody's going in and nobody's coming out. Israel has a problem. They have finally entered the land of promise. How did God get them into the promised land? By way of a miracle. He miraculously brought them across Jordan into the land of promise. And no sooner than they get in the promised land... There stands Jericho. Have you ever been there? God has opened a door. God has made a way. God has done in your life only what God can do. And no sooner than God has done that, you look and that stands Jericho. God has just blessed you with a miracle. And, and, and you make one step past that miracle and find yourself in another miracle. What do you do in life? When you need another miracle I tell you what you do you trust God all over again because here is the truth if he did it once he can do it again Th this text reminds us that in life we're going to face obstacles but as the people of God we should never look at an obstacle as a dead end but as an opportunity for God to work in our lives now brothers and sisters God works in our lives best when we are out of the picture amen amen God works best in our lives when we are out of the picture. Now, there's a song we sing, and we sing it basically in times of praise and worship. Um, 
less of me and more of thee. But brothers and sisters, that's like a whole lot of stuff in church. It sounds good, but it's not Bible. How are you going to tell God less of me? And boy, do you know what you're telling God? I'm still trying to hold on to some of me. Here is the truth. None of me and all of thee. And at Jericho, God got Israel totally out of the equation. They had a problem. But secondly, they had a promise. God says to Joshua emphatically, see, I have given into your hands Jericho. That word have given in the Hebrew text, it is what's called a prophetic perfect. Here's what it means. It means to look at a future event as having already been accomplished. God doesn't say I intend to. God doesn't say I might. God doesn't say I'm trying. God says I have given into your hands Jericho. He assures Joshua of victory before the battle begins. And I want to tell you that if you are a child of God, you're not fighting for victory. You're fighting from a victory. The victory was won 2,000 years ago on a hill called Calvary. We've already won. Two friends. Two friends hadn't seen each other for a while. And, and, and they bumped into each other. And one asked the other, Man, what you been up to? The other one responded and said, Well, I just finished reading the book of Revelation. He says, Why? Wow. He said, you read the whole book? He said, I read the whole book. He says, what did you find out after reading the book of Revelations? He said, God won. Yeah. Read the book of Revelations from the first chapter, first verse to the last chapter, last verse, and you only walk away with one thing, God won. And that's why no matter what it may look like in your life right now, no matter what you're going through right now, no matter how difficult it be right now, you can lift up your head and you can rejoice today because we're on the winning side. See, I have given into your hands Jericho. Israel had a problem. Israel had a promise. But then Israel also had a partner. The Bible says, as Joshua looked at Jericho, he saw a man standing next to Jericho with a drawn sword in his hand. And the very first thing Joshua wants is he wants the man to declare himself. He didn't ask the man, who are you? What are you doing? But he wants to know, <laughs> whose side are you on? And the man informs Joshua I haven't come to take sides. I've come to take over. You see, whenever God shows up, God doesn't show up to take sides. He shows up to take over. He says to Joshua, I have come as captain of the Lord's host. Man, it's not about whose side I am, or I'm on. You need to know who I am. I am captain of the armies of heaven. You don't know when to shout. 
So let me tell you who the captain of the armies of heaven is. It's Jesus Christ himself. This is a pre-Bethlehem manifestation of Jesus Christ. It is what the Old Testament scholars call a theophany. It is the Lord Jesus entering the world as a man before he ever entered the world as a baby in Bethlehem. And there have been critical times in the history of the world when the Lord didn't wait to come through Bethlehem. He showed up as a man. Amen. Get the picture. Joshua is faced with Jericho. Outer wall is six feet thick. 20 feet high. Inner wall is 12 feet thick. 30 feet high. City's on lockdown. Nobody's going in. Nobody's coming out. He's got a problem. But then there's this man standing there saying, I'm captain of the armies of heaven. Amen. Jericho is still there. But now, Joshua's eyes are off Jericho and on Jesus. Oh, God wants to bless somebody here today. If you'll take your eyes off of Jericho and place your eyes on the Lord Jesus. Amen. Keep your eyes on Jesus because he's always victorious. Keep your eyes on Jesus because he always walks in victory even before the battle begins. Keep your eyes on Jesus because he's in control of every situation. Get the picture, Jericho is standing there. But now he's not looking at Jericho. He's got his eyes on Jesus. And you know what Jesus says, Joshua, I got this. The city is on lockdown, but don't worry about it. I got this. Nobody's going in and nobody's coming out, but I got this. And God's word for somebody here today is, I got this. You've got cancer in your body, but I got this. You've got problems on your job, but I got this. You've got trouble in your family, but I got this. You've got problems in your finances, but I got this. And when he tells Joshua, I'm captain of the Lord's host, the Bible says Joshua fell to the earth and worshiped. Jericho is still standing there. The battle hasn't begun. But Joshua is worshiping. To remind us, brothers and sisters, that before we can experience victory in public, We have to exercise worship in pride. That you've got to learn how to praise God even before your battle begins. You've got to learn how to praise God even with Jericho standing there. You've got to learn how to praise God even with your problems, even with your perplexities, even with your troubles, even with your trials. God wants you to understand. That he wants your worship ahead of your work or your worry. You see, there are some folk who are part of the church. They'll work, but they won't worship. They'll come early. And stay late to fry fish and chicken, to bake cakes and pies. But you'll never see them in church with their hands up. You'll never hear them open their mouth and shout hallelujah. You'll never see them giving God any praise. I don't care what kind of work you do, your work can never substitute 
for your worship. You remember Mary and Martha was in the house of a man called Simon the leper. Jesus and the disciples were there. Martha was in the kitchen preparing a meal. Bible says Mary was out there at Jesus' feet anointing his head with oil and wiping them with the feet and, 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 and it got hot in that kitchen. And Martha walked out and I imagine stood in that doorway. Had a towel in one hand and put her hands on the hip. Wiped her brow and looked at Jesus and said, Master, if you're going to eat tonight, you need to make her get up and come in this kitchen and give me a hand. And Jesus says, Martha, Martha, you are troubled by many things, but Mary has chosen the better thing, the greater thing, the good thing, to say more important than even being in that kitchen, slaving over that stove, preparing a meal, is what Mary is doing at my feet. Before you go in the kitchen, spend some time at his feet. Um, in Exodus chapter 3 Moses is standing in front of a burning bush and, and God says to Moses pull off your shoes for the ground you stand on is holy ground. Moses, pull off your shoes from off your feet for the ground you stand on is holy ground. And here at Jericho, God says to Joshua, pull off your shoes. From off your, no, foot. He has Moses to pull off his shoes. He has Joshua to pull off a shoe. So there has to be something different going on in Joshua 5 than was happening in Exodus chapter 3. There has to be a different dynamic going on. And it was. Moses stands in front of that burning bush with blood on his hands. He's a fugitive from justice. And God is saying to Moses, before I can give you an assignment, I've got to straighten out your life. I'm not just going to send you on an assignment with your life is in a mess. So when he tells him to take off his shoes, he was literally saying to Moses, I'm going to do away with your past. Forget about the last time you were in Egypt. Forget about how you messed up down there the first time. But he says to Joshua, pull off your shoe. That was an ancient Hebrew custom. That whenever a covenant was made between two parties in which one had the power to keep the covenant and the other one did not. The weaker one would pull off a shoe and hand it to the stronger one. And it was his way of saying, I can't, but you can't. There's somebody in here today, you've been struggling with some stuff that's beyond your power to handle it. You've got some things going on in your life 
that you don't know how to deal with. You've run out of resources. You've run out of influences. You've run out of this and you've run out of that. Why not take off a shoe and literally say to God, Lord, I can't, but you can. Anybody here other than me and the commissioner know by taking off a shoe and saying, Lord, I can't, but you can. Look at your neighbor and tell him, neighbor, he can handle it. He can make ways. He can open doors. He can turn it around. He'll even get white folk off your back. Lord, I can't, but you can. See, I have given into your hands Jericho. See, I have given into your hands Jericho. Boy, I tell you, it's 30 miles, but church folk in Fort Worth and Dallas are all the same. Don't know when to celebrate. See, I have given into your hands Jericho. Oh, you hollering, but you still missing it. See, I have given into your hands Jericho. Let me prove to you you're missing it. You shouting when it gets to your hand. The shout is that before it ever got to Joshua's hand, it was in the Lord's hand. To remind you that nothing can come into your life that has not been first filtered through the hand of God. Amen. 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 You may be facing a Jericho, but it's already been through his hand. Brothers and sisters, here is why you ought to shout. Because it's really all about whose hand it's in. Look at your neighbor and tell him whose hand it's in is what makes the difference. Let me show you. Put a paintbrush in my hand and I'll give you back something but you won't be able to call it art. But place that same paintbrush in the hands of Michelangelo and he'll give you back a masterpiece because it all depends on whose hand it's in. Put a rod in my hand and I'll beat you down with it. It'll become a deadly weapon. But put it in the hands of Moses. And he'll open up your Red Sea. Because it all depends on whose hand it's in. Put a slingshot in my hand. And it's nothing more than a childhood toy. But place it in the hands of David. And he'll slay your giant. Because it all depends on whose hand it's in. Put some mud in my hand and I'll make a mud cake. But put it in the Lord's hand. He'll anoint the eyes of the blind and they'll receive their sight. Because it all depends on whose hand it's in. Put some fish and bread in my hand and I'll make me a fish sandwich. But put it in the Lord's hands. He'll bless it and break it and feed a multitude. Because it all depends on whose hand it's in. Put some nails and wood in my hand and I'll build you a birdhouse. But put it in the Lord's hand and he'll save the whole world because it all depends on whose hand it's in. Look at your neighbor and tell him put it in his hand. Put your Jericho in his hand. Israel had a problem. They had a promise, they had a partner, but then they also was given a plan. Strange plan. 
God said, Joshua, I want you to march around Jericho once a day for six days. On the seventh day, I want you to march around seven times. On the seventh time around, priests are going to sound the trumpet. People are going to shout with a great shout. And the walls are going to fall down flat. That's unorthodox. No aerosol, no bombs, no explosive. March around once a day for six days. On the seventh day, march around seven times. Seven times around, the priests are going to sound the trumpet. People are going to shout with a great shout. And the walls are going to fall down flat. Now, Pastor Thomas... Had that been me and my dollar, these walls never would have come down. They wouldn't have come down, first of all, because they had to walk around once a day for six days. Seven times around the seventh day. Here's the first reason why they wouldn't have come down for me and my dollar. The people couldn't say anything. Oh, I would have had some Negro. Would have said, I ain't coming out here another day looking stupid. You ever heard anything as stupid as this? Do do y'all think Moses would have had us out here doing this? Now, this is the same bunch of Negroes that went to raising hell, and Moses had to cuss them out and didn't get in the promise. The other reason Mount Olive wouldn't have gotten in is because he doesn't say some. He says all the people. And it's not just shout, great shout. See, you couldn't have just... That wasn't going to work. The Lord says all the people have to give a great shout. I've been in church all my life, but I ain't never seen that. I've been preaching 42 years, but I ain't never had that to happen one time. All the people give a great shout. It's three million people out there. And God says all the people have to give a great shout. Amen. And God doesn't explain why. Because walking around a wall and even shouting, common sense says, will not bring a wall down. But brothers and sisters, We're not called to obey God only when it makes sense to us. You've got to learn how to trust God when it doesn't make sense. When it doesn't stack up to reason. When it doesn't appeal to your intellect. You've got to learn how to trust God when you can't trace God. When it's not making any sense, you've got to learn how to trust him. You know, our problem is, is whenever we're faced with a Jericho, the first thing we do is throw up our hands and we want to know, Lord, why? Why me? Why this? Why not? 